was kind of a bully back then. You know, he really was. And uh, he treated a lot of people rough. He told Warrior, he said, you need to find another, just flat out. It, it, Bill Watson, oh, really? told, but Warrior, you need to get another job. You need to find another line of work. You should not do this anymore. Uh -huh. But Sting, he saw a little something in if, if he tried. Of course, and if you lost a bar fight, Bill Watts would fire you. Because, once again, well, I, I was exempt from that. Because if I'd have won a fight ever, actually, then they would probably would have fired me. Oh, fuck. By 1982, Watts had agreed to mercifully buy McGurk out, thus taking control of Oklahoma and Arkansas. And the final piece of the puzzle fell into place when he made a deal with Houston promoter Paul Bosch to take that city from Joe Blanchard's San Antonio Circuit. A big part for him opening up Louisiana was a Junkyard Dog. I mean, Dog yep. was... Uh, uh, he was a fixture down there. He's like almost a god. I'm going to throw the powder at Dog, yeah. right? And I get the powder and I jump up. He's got Dennis Condry. He's about to thump him. <laughs> and I throw the powder and it's the industrial <laughs> fan is in the back and it blew it all right back at me. So Dog has to go down face first and rub his face <laughs> in the, in the powder, powder right? so they can see that it's, you know. The Freebirds wipe the baby faces out and there's Dog with his goggles and the cane. And he's selling, he's blind and they look and Michael Hayes with the flourish like I'm coming for you. And all of a sudden Dog said, this guy hopped the barricade and was right next to him, said, don't worry, dog, I got him. And he pulls out the handgun. And dog says, it's the biggest handgun I ever seen. And as he put, now dog has a conundrum here. Yeah, he, he's not he supposed to, to see out, it. Do I, do I blow the angle and reveal I'm not blind and save the free bird's lives? Yeah, or Michael. Grizzly Smith. And he knew those towns. He had been working there for 20 years. He was Watts' eyes. He was his ears. He was his stooge. He was his agent. He was his confidant. If you go look at the states of, of Arkansas, Mississippi, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and Houston, Texas, every television market that had TV stations carried Mid-South Wrestling. Once that he moved the, the show from, from Oklahoma uh, under Leroy to Louisiana to Shreveport, and he got rid of the local announcer, Danny Williams, in, in Oklahoma, he brought in Boyd Pierce. Boyd Pierce who was one of the great characters yeah. in the history of wrestling. Always and had a different uh, jacket, right? Uh, yeah, the, the loud jacket. He made me look like a Brooks Brothers <laughs> you know, model ad. We'd get to Channel 3 and do promos from 9 a.m. to about 3 p.m. And then you'd have a couple hours off, and then you'd go to Shreveport TV at the Irish McNeil, and you'd do two tapes. And that was in Shreveport, and that was every two weeks. And, of course, Shreveport also was the home of the infamous Alamo Plaza Motor Inn. <laughs> How many nights did you spend at the Alamo Plaza in Shreveport? Oh, man, I tell you. Well, since we were in Shreveport on Tuesday night at the Memorial Auditorium, the next morning we were right there so we could do promos for six hours again, where we would do local promos for every television market, plugging the specific matches, which, by the way, never changed. Mm -hmm. When you advertised matches on those promos and you talked about them, the card was not subject to change right, unless yeah. somebody was dead. Two weeks of our lives, 14 days, we did two one-hour TV shows, 15 house shows, two all-day promo sets, drove 4,700 miles in a car while doing that, and I can't speak for anybody else, but I made, and I was only 22 years old and just pleased as punch to be there, $5,600 for two weeks in 1984, not mm -hmm. bad. 1984 was record year for, for Mid-South Wrestling because he was able to take a lot of new ideas to Mid-South. Yeah. They weren't new in they, Memphis, but, but they, they were, were new in Mid-South. They were new yeah. in Mid-South and he implemented them, but Bill put his twist on them. Do you remember where Neidhart dressed in the Sam Houston Coliseum at one point? Remember, they did a deal where he, he was switching from, from <laughs> baby face to heel or heel, to one or the other, he was switching right. sides. But because of the bicycle, on the tape, they shot the angle in Shreveport, but it hadn't aired for a month, or it wouldn't air for a month in Houston. So for a couple <laughs> of shows in Houston, since he technically had turned on these guys, and people may have seen that, but it hadn't aired in Houston, he couldn't dress with the baby faces or the heels. He had to dress in a janitor's closet. <laughs> it's one thing that Watts was always big on the heels embarrassing the baby face, where everybody could understand. They may not know yeah. what it's like to be suplexed on their head or be put in a... German crotch lock leg strangle, but they knew what it was like to be embarrassed in front of their friends and their family. Right. And that was a big part of, of Mid-South Wrestling's tool for the babyface to want to get revenge. There was a fancy hotel about two blocks over from the Myriad, right in downtown Oak City. 
And they, it was kind of the, where they had the Sunday brunch for right. all you could eat for $15 yeah. uh-huh. with the ice sculptures and everything. And the, the Sunday yeah. after church crowd and in would come. We found it. So it, me, Bobby Eaton, Dennis Condry, Carl Fergie, Buddy Landell, Crusher Khrushchev, <laughs> Butch Reed, and Ernie, Ernie Ladd, um, and probably Hercules Hernandez at some points would yeah. go in there and people would look like, oh my God, and plus 15 bucks, all you can eat. Mm-hmm. Dick Slater and Dark Journey had been an item and then they became not an item and Sting innocently, I suppose, who knows? Who knows? Lost I mean, history, you know. gave Dark, Dark Journey a ride to the matches and Slater that, took exception. It was to more it. of a ride to the matches. Just well, gave he, her a he, ride. There was a ride involved. I'm not <laughs> people with very little education and social skills that were not exactly the smoothest, <laughs> that didn't exactly fit in a particular slot, could make huge amounts of money, most of it in cash, along with being television celebrities and getting their choice, regardless of their personal appearance, of all the girls they wanted. Right. And some way we managed to fuck that up. <laughs> Mid-South Wrestling was one very determined, driven man's brainchild. Cowboy Bill Watts' idea of the perfect wrestling territory. The sport presented with respect and logic and credibility, along with drama, glory, violence, the mud, the blood, and the beer. And for a time, until economies collapsed, expansions failed, and entertainment became the rule of the day, Mid-South Wrestling was the gold standard for what a wrestling promotion could be in the days back in the territory.